because he was in issuing an absolute warning. Now, friends, let's understand something. This commandment here is an unbelievable warning to us. I wish we could somehow navigate around that. But God issues a warning here. And he says something that's rather staggering. He says, I'm a, I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on children to the third and fourth generation, to those who hate me. What he was establishing is that all people who put their faith and confidence in anything and anyone other than God are demonstrating a hatred for God. Because God made it very clear, you're either for God or you're against God. You cannot serve both God and man. He is, he's an either or God. He's a jealous God. He doesn't allow his holy space to be occupied by any other. He doesn't share his platform. He doesn't accommodate and he most certainly isn't politically correct. He's God. He rises above every constitution. He rises above every theorem and mathematical equation. He rises above science. He rises above opinions and theories of evolution. He rises above all the brilliance and the soul searching of mankind and the brilliance of our humankind. And he says, I am the Lord your God. And you shall not make gods of any other. And what he was doing is he was issuing an absolute warning. Now, it's interesting to me as I began to study that because it really put the fear into my own heart. I thought, well, the times that I have placed my faith and confidence in other than God, Lord, are you going to punish my children? Moses settled that. Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 16 that fathers shall not be put to death for the sins of their children. And children shall not be put to death for the sins of their fathers. But each is to die for his own sin. God instituted the inalienable fact that he has no family plan for salvation. But he was issuing a dire warning. He was saying something to fathers and mothers and to parents, even right here on top of Mount Sinai, that children who are reared in idolatrous environments in the home Number one, will become infected by that idolatrous environment. In America today, we are facing what some are calling a flu epidemic. There are a lot of people who are not doing well. You and I know them. They're all around us. They're our family and our friends. And this is a very serious flu epidemic outbreak. Doctors' offices are filled up. We are being told, if you haven't had that flu shot, please go and get it. It's not too late. Take immediate steps. Another thing that we keep hearing, if you are going down, stay home. Don't infect others. Don't pass it on. Last night, I was watching a snippet of the news and uh, one of the medical doctors on one of the channels said, when a person coughs for six feet on the other side of the cough, if they have flu, it can settle down and remain there for up to 24 hours on a table, on a doorknob, on a plate, and some unsuspecting person who is innocent, 
who does not have flu could come by and put their hand on that spot up to 24 hours after one cough by one infected person, and they could potentially pick up this bad strain of flu. And what God was saying, moms and dads, if you are bringing up your sons and daughters in an idolatrous environment, in a household where anything and anyone other than God is being placed in that one place of worship, your children can grow up and become infected by that idolatrous environment. They too will become idolaters. Be very careful. Support your team, but don't worship it. Love hunting, but don't worship it. Love your possessions and be appreciative of them, but don't worship them. Use money and be grateful for it, but don't ever develop a poisoned love for money. Don't worship money. It's the root of all evil. This is hard for us as parents because we love our children so much. 